As our story opens today, Reed and Trent are concerned that someone is going to try and steal Princess Hope's diamond. Hold on, there's a famous diamond called the Hope Diamond. I get it! How very clever! How original! I can't understand. What is the use of having a 478 and one half carat diamond if one is afraid to wear it? But your Royal Highness... I appreciate your concern, Mr. Reed, but I feel sure that my staff here at the embassy can cope with any situation that might arrive. My only point, the matter is closed. Thank you for coming. Good day, gentlemen. Well, that was short and sweet. On to Captain Nice, I guess. No, Harley, this calls for action. A-C-T-I-O-N, action. <laughs> oh, there's more. And by the way, he has to do that action gag every episode. I'm calling a purple alert. Oh, I'm not a purple alert, BJ. Call an orange one. It's cheaper. <laughs> no, I'll a purple one. This calls for Mr. Terrific. At the gas station, Stanley recently fell through the skylight when his pill ran out, and coincidentally, he reads a story to Hal about how some jewel thief stole a bunch of stuff by going in through a skylight. Meanwhile, a customer pays his tab with a $50 bill, but as Stanley is about to put it in the till, Reed calls, so he absentmindedly puts it in his pocket. Hal discovers it later, and Stanley tries to explain what happened. Later, Hal is going out on a date, and he thinks Stanley should come along. Hello? Reed here, Stanley. Holly and I would like to meet you to discuss arrangements for tomorrow night. Okay, Mr. Reed. Over here? Uh, Hal's going out soon. No, I'd rather not. We've been seen around your place too often lately. Meet us at the Club Oasis on Hawthorne Street. I know that place. It has dim lights and everything. It even looks like a spy hangar. <laughs> right, my boy? The Club Oasis at 9 o'clock. Okay. Stanley. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you've got the wrong number, sir. Better luck next time, uh, uh, wrong number. You sure you won't join us? Oh, thanks, Hal, but wild horses couldn't drag me out of this apartment tonight. Okay, buddy, you don't know what you're missing? <laughs> to make things even more suspicious, Stanley has let it slip that he's expecting to come into a little money soon. What he means is he's actually supposed to get paid for being Mr. Terrific for the first time, but he drops just enough to make Hal curious and take a wild guess where Hal takes his date. I hope you enjoyed your meal. It was delightful as usual, Abdul, but I'm sorry I can't say the same for the service. Forgive me, could not be helped. It seems my wife's nephew is missing. Oh, oh we're so sorry. What's the matter, the flu? You could call it that. The miserable dog flew away with my money. <laughs> that wide-eyed little guy, I can't believe it. Many an innocent face masks the heart of a clever thief. You know, Abdul has a point there. Well, then, according to his theory, Stanley's the most dangerous criminal since Dillinger. <laughs> Why are you laughing? The idea of Stanley being a dangerous criminal. Why, he's so honest, he would have made Abe Lincoln nervous. That's right. I'll tell you, Stanley is probably the most honest guy I've ever met. He wouldn't do... Subtle, Stanley. And here we go. Hal hears partial conversation, Stanley is evasive, and Hal comes to the perfectly logical conclusion that his lifelong friend and fudge muscle, Stanley, is an international jewel thief. Well, sure, anybody could make a mistake like that. So naturally, Hal does the stupidest thing possible. Your invitation, please, sir. But you dare to ask me for an invitation? A man who has been personally decorated by the crown heads of every state in Europe? Oh, oh, that's ridiculous. I mean, after all, there isn't a function in this city that I'm not invited to, including those quaint little get-togethers the Americans call barbecues. I should have known, but I do have strict instructions. Good show, good show. I admire that. Should you ever be seeking employment, don't hesitate to call me at the British Embassy. Good people are so hard to find. And you are good people. <laughs> on my honor, Sir Nitpick is not based on that. How? What are you doing here? I'm trying to keep you out of jail. Out of what? Look, I can't talk right now. I'm very busy. Stanley, if you don't talk right now, I blow the whistle on your whole plan. You know. Let's have that talk now, huh? <laughs> Of course, that's when the thieves strike. The princess. Hey, put him down. Stop. Hey, him out. Leave him alone, you big bully. Pass it out. Hey, come on, what are you doing? Come on, what are you doing? Come on, what are you doing? 
Did you get it, boss? Like taking candy from the baby. A very rich baby. They escape on a motorcycle, which they drive into a small truck, which they drive into a bigger truck. Somehow, in spite of all that, Stanley manages to track them and gets ahead of them. What's going on here? I'm afraid there'll be a slight detour to the state penitentiary. Must be a fed. Let's get him! The power's going off. <laughs> I'm telling you, those pills need to last one minute longer than they do. 61 minutes for the main ones, 11 minutes for the boosters. That would solve most of Stanley's problems. Come here, somebody will get hurt. I included that just because it's one of the few genuinely funny gags in the episode. While Stanley shakes off the cobwebs and takes his booster pill, they roll out the motorcycle and prepare to get away. In the epilogue, Stanley explains to Hal that he wanted to make some extra money for them and all the cloak and dagger was some insurance security thing. Plus, he got paid. You do all of that working for what? Peanuts? N not exactly peanuts, Hal. Doyas. Doyas? 12,750 Belgravian Doyas. 12,750? What, for a couple hours' work? Hey, how much is that in American money? $3.75. Like most of this episode, an old joke with no new spin on it, just an overused laugh track. A change of channel, a few commercials, and we find Carter Nash talking to his mother on a payphone after a long day at work. Yes, I know it's very late, Mother. I'm on my way home right now. Mother, two men are breaking into the jewelry store. Hang up and I'll phone the police. What? Mother, I'd rather let the police handle this. Yes, I know I'm Captain Nice. I just don't want to change into my costume. Yes, I know I'm supposed to be the nemesis of evil. <laughs> all right, all right. Just don't push me too far, Mother, or one of these days I'll take some of that stuff and fly away. As if. He hiccups into Captain Nice, captures the bad guys, and calls the police. But as he takes them away from the phone booth, he fails to notice something. Here, it, it wouldn't be long. Squad car should be here any moment. What drank the formula? I'm going to go with either a mouse or a bird. Next morning, Carter is getting ready for work. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Mother. What's so good about it? I was up until 2 o'clock this morning trying to get the grime out of your costume. Carter, that's the tenth one you've ruined this month. I'm sorry, Mother, but there's a lot of wear and tear in this line of work. You should be thankful you have a mother to sew and clean your costumes, you ungrateful brute! Carter, haven't you forgotten something? What do you mean? You didn't say good morning to Sheldon. Oh, Mother. Carter, parakeets have feelings, too. <laughs> Good morning, Sheldon. I love you. I love you. I know, Sheldon. I love you, too. We haven't seen this bird before. I wonder if he's going to have something to do with the plot. <laughs> oh, I wish you'd gone into your father's line of work. He never comes home in a dirty suit. But, Mother, he never goes out. Is that a crack? <laughs> no, not at all. It's just that... Mother, can I ask you something? Yes. Mother, what does Dad do for a living? <laughs> Well, I'm not sure. You don't know? Carter, if marriage teaches you one thing, it's not to pry. Sorry, even Alice Ghostly couldn't rescue that one. There's a right and a wrong way to do a character like Carter's dead. You're looking at the wrong way. It's getting late. I'd better get down to the office. Did you have a clean handkerchief? Yes, Mother. Did you have your comb? Yes, Mother. Cape? Yes, Mother, I have my cape and my mask. I stab off the formula. It's gone. Oh, no. I must have dropped it in that telephone booth last night. When that telephone booth starts flying around, people are going to ask questions. Well, you'd better hurry over there before someone else finds it. Right. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Sheldon. I love you. I love you. I love you, too, dear. <laughs> That's the right way. Carter finds the broken bottle, then learns that something is stealing, or perhaps eating, all the vegetation in the area, including an entire nursery. 
Carter finds fibers all over the place and takes them back to the lab to confirm his suspicions. That takes him and Sergeant Kane to the zoo where they track the creature to a food storage room. I have the feeling we're not alone. Now I know we're not alone. I'm going in there and have a look. Carter, aren't you frightened? No, actually terrified would be closer to it. Carter, be careful. Did you see it? Yes, I saw it, but I wish I hadn't. What was it? A caterpillar. A caterpillar drank the formula and now it can eat a whole nursery of vegetation. I do wonder if it ate an entire nursery, either it should be 10 feet tall or we should have caterpillar poop all over the place. Where is it putting all that? Maybe that's why they consider it such a threat. But so far, all it's done is eat stuff, and the formula's bound to wear off soon, so just leave it alone and the problem will resolve itself, right? No, Mayor Uncle Fred calls in the military. They drop a bunch of bombs on it with no effect, then the caterpillar escapes down a manhole into the tunnels beneath the street. How long do caterpillars live? Uh-oh, I never thought of that. Thought of what? Caterpillars don't remain caterpillars. Don't tell me that thing is going to turn into a moth. That thing is going to turn into a moth. I asked you not to tell me that. We've used that joke twice in three episodes now, and it's still not funny. Carter goes home to figure out a solution. Good evening, Sheldon. Good evening, dear. I love you. Carter, what is that thing you're working on? I'm working on a caterpillar lure. This machine will reproduce electronically the sound of lettuce. What exactly does lettuce sound like? He explains the caterpillar's proportional strength, which means it's very possible this thing is stronger than Captain Nice. He's ready to go lure the caterpillar out of the gas mains. After that, he has no idea what he's going to do. i got to get going. Carter, hmm? shall I give Sheldon your supper? Well, Sheldon doesn't like meatloaf. Sheldon likes what birds like. Bugs and ants. Come on, Carter, you can put it together just a little bit more. But Keppel, you shouldn't be here, it's dangerous. I've got to find that caterpillar. What for? Well, it, they, they mustn't be allowed to destroy it. It belongs to science. Doctor, if that animal gets a hold of you, he might tear you to shreds. Well, I will take that chance. Of course, I will risk it for science. But what are you doing? I've set up a lure to bring the caterpillar out of its hiding place. Now, I'm asking you, please, get out of the park. No, absolutely not. Is that your final answer? <laughs> No, absolutely not. From the safety of my office, thank you. <laughs> Doctor, stay away from the bushes and keep your eyes on this. I'll be back in a minute. I wonder what's in the box. He turns into Captain Nice just in time to see Von Keppel get his butt kicked. Nice heads into the bushes to confront the monster. <laughs> I was afraid of that. I'm going to have to use my ultimate weapon. I wonder what it could be. Drink it all. Oh. Ah. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Did Mother sew that costume too? Sheldon eats the caterpillar, returns to his cage, and all is well. Took a super bird to defeat a super caterpillar. Look! Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it is a bird. <laughs> Bye, Sheldon. As far as I can recall, we won't see you again. You got one episode, but you got to prevent a bad B movie called The Caterpillar That Ate Big Town. We will never forget your heroic sacrifice.